Five NCLEX questions of the day. Question number one. Which client is at the greatest risk of getting osteoporosis? A. A 45-year-old man who has COPD. B. A 55-year-old man who consumes excessive alcohol. C. A 55-year-old Caucasian woman who runs. D. A 75-year-old Asian woman who smokes. Let's see who has more risk factors. We have a 45, a 55, and a 75-year-old. Advanced age is definitely a risk factor for osteoporosis, and it is usually defined as those who are older than 65, so there is one risk factor in answer choice D, and we also have two men and two women. As we learned in my osteoporosis video, women especially Asians and Caucasians and those who are postmenopausal have a high risk of getting osteoporosis. So answer C has two risk factors, Caucasian and woman, but she runs which is a good weight-bearing exercise for bone strength. Answer D has three risk factors, including being older than 65, being an Asian woman, and given her age, she is most likely postmenopausal. And she also smokes, so that makes her the highest risk. Alcohol use is also a risk factor, and those with COPD may be on long-term steroids, which is also a risk factor. But combined together, the client in choice D is at the greatest risk. Question number two. A client is prescribed alendronate. Which instruction provided by the nurse is correct? Before we read the answer choices, what is alendronate? It ends in the suffix dronate. What does that tell you? That tells us it belongs to the category of bisphosphonate, which is the first line treatment for osteoporosis. Other examples include riset dronate and zoledronate. What is the one thing you need to know about taking bisphosphonates? Yes, that they can cause pill-induced esophagitis or inflammation of the esophagus due to the medication getting stuck in the esophagus. So measures to prevent that include taking the medication on an empty stomach with a full glass of water and sit upright for at least 30 minutes afterwards. Now let's go over the answer choices. A. Take the medication with breakfast in the morning. No. It should be taken on an empty stomach. B. Take the medication on an empty stomach in the morning. Yes, there is less of a chance to lie back down in bed after waking up in the morning. C. Take the medication with a snack at bedtime. That's incorrect. D. Take the medication on an empty stomach at bedtime. Empty stomach? Yes. But not at bedtime. The client should sit upright for at least 30 minutes after taking bisphosphonates, so the correct answer is B. Question number three. The nurse takes care of a client with kyphosis. Which nursing diagnosis is a priority? What is kyphosis? Kyphosis is the forward rounding of the spine due to osteoporosis of the vertebrae, and the question is asking for a priority nursing diagnosis. Let's read the answer choices. A. Impaired physical mobility. B. Chronic pain. C. Disturbed body image. D. Risk for fall. Airway, breathing, and circulation is always a priority, but none of the answer choices mention that. So let's move on to physiological needs which always triumph over psychological needs until the question is specifically asking for a psychological answer, which is not the case here. So we can eliminate answer choice. C. Impaired physical mobility and chronic pain are both physiological needs. However, impaired mobility is an expected finding in kyphosis, and the pain is chronic and not acute. So choices A and B are incorrect. Answer. Choice D says risk for fall, which would be a priority because clients with osteoporosis will most likely experience fractures if they have a fall. Question number four. The nurse is providing education to a client with newly diagnosed osteoporosis. Which statement made by the client indicates understanding? Select all that apply. A. I will increase my intake of dairy products. B. I will start jogging and running to improve my bone strength. C. I will stay home more often to avoid falling. D. I will make sure to have a bowel movement every day. E. I will quit smoking. As mentioned from earlier, smoking is a risk factor for osteoporosis, so answer choice E is correct. Dairy products such as milk, Yogurt and cheese are high in calcium, so it is a good choice for osteoporosis. 
Low-impact exercises such as walking, squatting, and swimming with controlled movements are ideal for clients with osteoporosis for building bone strength. High-impact exercises such as jogging and running put clients at risk for falls and fractures, especially for newly diagnosed clients. So answer, choice B is incorrect. Same goes for answer choice C. Fall prevention is important, but clients should engage in low-impact exercise to maintain bone health. Staying home is not the best thing to do. D. I will make sure to have a bowel movement every day. This is correct because constipation is a common side effect of calcium supplement, which is important in treating osteoporosis. So the correct answers are A, D, and E. Question number five. A client is on calcitonin for osteoporosis. What should the nurse monitor for? A. Hypokalemia. B. Hyperkalemia. C. Hypocalcemia. D. Hypercalcemia. What is calcitonin? The prefix cal in calcitonin tells us that it is related to calcium in bones. So we can eliminate choice A and B, which are associated with potassium levels. So, does calcitonin cause low or high calcium levels? Calcitonin can lead to hypocalcemia or low level of calcium because it inhibits bone resorption, so less calcium leaks from the bones to the bloodstream, and it also increases renal excretion of calcium, so hypocalcemia can result, and classic signs of hypocalcemia are Trousseau's sign and Chavostek sign. Thank you for reviewing the questions with me. Like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more NCLEX reviews. Thank you.